everybody, here's Christian from Teamwork Cast. And I am the cigarette smoking putty. Mm, the truth is out there. Uh, this is uh, CCG Archaeology. And we have unearthed another beautiful artifact from the 90s. Man, so 90s. Is there anything that is more 90s than the X-Files? Uh, Ugly Kid Joe. I'm not familiar with that one. It's a, it's a band. We won't talk about it. So this is uh, the X Files trading card game. Now, for if, if there's any millennials watching, Nick, can you really explain real quick what the X Files is? So, beginning in the '80s, we started to have this sort of suspicion that the government was hiding uh, extraterrestrial life from us. Yeah, and there's a sort of paranoia that grows. Like if you watch ET or if you watch uh, Flight of the Navigator, you see this sort of mistrust of government when it comes to extraterrestrials. Yeah. Combined with this sort of love of conspiracy theories, it all culminated in X-Files, which was about this dude who worked for the government looking at all of these bizarre cases that the FBI never solved, trying to piece together uh, the mystery of what happened to his sister. Yeah, that was kind of like initially the motivation. And of course, we have Scully uh, who comes in, who is like a hot, uh, intelligent. They're both super intelligent. She's both... the science. She, she's the science. She's, she's the she rational. Brought... She's a skeptic, yeah. a rational skeptic. And she, uh, he, uh, David Duchovny, is the guy who uh, uh, who is uh, the believer, who wants to believe, who wants to figure out all this stuff. Yeah. Once regard. I really, beautiful show. I recently inspired also by the card game. Uh, I recently rewatched a couple of episodes and it's amazing. It's a really good TV show. I think yeah. still and it still holds up so well. There are new episodes well. coming. Yeah, there is, it has been announced, and I'm really excited about this one. Um, it's something that really struck me about the X Files show uh, now, especially looking at it from the lens of today, where you know geek culture has grown to become so mainstream, and you have like all those superhero TV shows and everything. So the supernatural topic has become so prevalent in, in modern uh, TV shows. This is a very um, serious. Uh, seeming or semi serious looking and very adult take on supernatural events, I would say. Yes. Like bo- say. both of those guys uh, talking about this take things very serious. They have like this incredibly dry sense of humor. Um, and uh, today everything is way more wacky and comic uh, style. This was this yeah. was a completely different approach. And that's, I think, one of the draws of X Files. And also the fact that. Um, uh, that everything seemed as which was inspired by real events, even though I mean, inspired by real events is like such a cop out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This may have happened somehow. Uh, so this is this was came out in ninety six. So the same year that X Files as uh, Netrunner was released. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the late nineties uh, uh, trading card games. And let me tell you. Yeah. I think that if any game were to say that they were trying to capitalize on money in collectible card games it was this one i don't know man i think uh you have said that it was designed by wizard It is designed by Matt Wilson, yes. So Matt Wilson is the person that is depicted on the Netrunner card, the wizard, or wizard, which is amazing to me. Like this is basically, there's so much Netrunner connection that's actually very similar to Netrunner in many ways. Uh, I don't, I I wouldn't say it's it's not as... um, Uh, All I'm saying is ultra rares. Yeah, there's ultra rares. There's one ultra rare in each booster box. Right. Uh, yeah. So uh, like, there's more more rare than rare cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also I think uh, d- uh, by a d- very different company that uh, USPC, so US Playing Card Company. I think. Uh, uh, so the I think that's only only CCG they did, and otherwise they just did like regular playing cards. It was actually by IDW Games. There's like a com- yeah like what IEDW there's like multiple logos on here, yeah. but the, I think they they didn't do much other trading card games. So this is like a very unique t- take on However, how trading card games work. They've re- they designed the game uh, Machikoro mm, the and mode. also Tammany Hall. Oh, nice! And they also still have the X Files license because they released an X Files board game. Sweet, which was also I think designed by Matt Wilson. 
so you can already see that there's like um like from design like there's like this little seal that you have to open which is yeah. kind of like like you do with playing cards which uh, which is kind of nice nice little detail and it also gives you more of an idea of a of like you know secret files that you open government files and something that i really like there's two manuals so there is like a, a official rules and advanced rules so this yeah. is this is the one you start out with and again the rules are sealed up with a tiny seal in here that's uh -huh. so, so cute so the the basic I think gameplay of this game and the way that it's sort of yeah. similar to uh, Netrunner is that one player plays the syndicate, which is symbolized by the cigarette smoking man. They're the people running the world secretly. And then one to four other players play as people who work for the FBI. So oh. it could be Crycheck, it could be Mulder, Scully, uh, any of those people. So it's like four players, up to four players versus one corporation player. Well, what you're talking is about the multiplayer variant. I think um, yeah. th this described in advanced rules somehow, somehow, but the regular games can be also played it's with one-on-one. One. One one, and then you just take turns. Like So so when you, when it's your turn, uh, the other player becomes the syndicate you're playing against, and then it's the other player's turn, and then he's playing as the agents. And you. So it's kind of like, I, I kind of like it because they kind of deviate from, uh, they don't care so much about the canon of the show. Yeah, it's it's more like making the game playable, um, and so the so the gray booklet is kind of like very reduced, very simple playing rules. Uh -huh. Some of the stuff that is written on the cards doesn't apply, or some of the cards are even shuffled out, and it's this, uh, and that kind of explains basic the basic ideas of the game, and also um, they specifically say that you should just take the cards that you have in here uh, and uh, just play with the cards that you get in the starter pack. Um, the starter packs are also randomized, and that's something also we have discussed in previous uh, episodes of this of this uh, archaeology thing. Is that that's something that was like a core idea of the trading cards from the nineties? Yeah, that you would always have randomized cards that everybody would start with completely different sets, even if you're starting out the game. They would never have pre-constructed decks. Or so rarely. You're you're missing the little insert over there, which is maybe yeah. the most important. Thing. I'm, I'm not going into. I'm just just showing the manual. The manual is again. Uh, we're going to talk about how the how the game is played in a second here, but the manual is also nice because it's also full color. Also, I think yeah, that's that's a nice little detail. That's the transgender version of the booklet. Transgender. Yeah, like there's a misprint, a very well-known misprint on some of the oh. manuals. So this is Diana Scully, but it says Agent Fox Mulder on there. <laughs> so this is called the transgender version of the booklet the, among the collectors oh the collectors uh, yes so yeah very nice very colorful um, booklet describes things very easily there's also like those blue passages where they basically give you like an example of a, how a play uh, would turn out uh, lots of tokens involved but they not, don't include any tokens you could later on get tokens I like that there is like you can tell that this is a playing card company because at some point they describe the cards um, the card types and they call them the suits. Oh. So like each card type is a different suit, which is a bit silly, silly I think. But uh, yeah, yeah. Here they go into the nine different suits, which uh, which are the different types of the cards. So like events and and agents are different suits. Also, I just want to point out. I watched this uh, series recently. I watched this episode. I thought this was Benjen from Game of Thrones. <laughs> But it's not. It's just a this uh, actor that looks very similar. Yeah. So how does the game? How Wait does the game minute. play? Yeah? Wait a minute. What? I had the wrong rule book up. Yeah, I told you. It's played one on one to one. Like there's yeah. like a multiplayer variant where you can play with multiple people, but the regular game is supposed to be played one on one, and each plays the FBI and the evil evil guys at the same time. So can you explain how this works? Like you get this this kind of cheat sheet. Uh, it's that's it's kind of like free. playing Clue. Yeah. So <laughs> you don't you don't know. So the idea is that each one of of the two players picks an X file, and these are all the possible X files. You have to have a list. Because otherwise you can play, and then you do certain actions. You kind of run on the corporation server, so to speak, in Netrunner speak. And then when you succeed, you can ask the uh, the opponent one question, one yes or no question. Uh, so each of the X files has like different abilities. So it's you know affiliation can be alien, government, evolutionary, primordial, or occult. The motive can be knowledge, survival, knowledge again, ideology, control, security, stuff like that. The methods can be subterfuge, possession, violence, like different different types of qualities, um, different types of properties. 
So you can ask a question like, is the affiliation an alien? Yes or no? And then the other guy answers yes or no. And then that kind of like rules out so some possibilities depending on the answer and also makes some possibilities more more uh, more uh, uh, likely. And so the idea is uh, that you uh, keep asking those questions until you narrow it down to just a couple of X-Files and then you just do a guess. And if you guess the X-File correctly, then you win the game. Yep. I like it. I, I think that's a really great mechanic. I mean, you said it's kind of like Clue, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think um, that's kind of nice because it's uh, usually uh, that's something that I also like about Netrunner. Like Magic is a game that is all about reducing a number down to zero, right? Yeah. So, so it's like this very predictable. You know exactly how it plays out. Um, it's it's a very like mathematical game. Everything can be reduced to how much damage does it do in the end. Whereas this is a less predictable, it's kind of less palpable um, winning condition. Like you have to find out secret information. Like if you knew everything about this game, uh, you would win immediately, right? Yes, it's very true. And Magic, if you knew exactly what the player is, has on hand, you wouldn't necessarily win the game. It wouldn't help you necessarily to make more damage. So we're going to open up. There's like a little bandolier of cards in here. These are, I think, the, again, it has like a rarity level like in Magic, uh, in Netrunner, an original Netrunner, where you have some cards which are considered vital. I think these are not called vital here. They are called fixed. Let me see. I have a list up somewhere. And uh, this is again to solve this problem that these are randomized packs of cards and they want to make sure that when you buy a starter that you will have a playable deck. So they include like a little extra um, uh, packet of cards which are from the from this vital um, fixed. S fixed set and they uh, basically make sure that you have all the cards that you need to in order to play this. So um, let me see. Let me, maybe we can start with the X files. So these are two X files, and that's it. So these are the thing, the X files that you pick at the beginning of the game. Uh, and uh, again, uh, you can pick when, whichever you want. It doesn't really matter. And then they have like these qualities here on the side: three, uh, four abilities, and each ability or th four properties. And this one has, it's really difficult to, I really love the graphical design of those cards, except from this one aspect, because the font is so tiny here and so difficult to read. Yeah, so, that was a lot of the problem with this, is that this would have worked better as a board game, I think. So this is a primordial control, possessing, and insanity. It's a BJ Morrow genetic trait recipient. Oh, I think I remember this episode, like the gene modified her and she, her body fell apart. And I think this is one of the ones where there is an ultra rare version. Um, no, no, the agents got ult ultra rare versions. There so, were also ultra rare um, X Files. Uh, but otherwise, I really like like the graphical design. Like this is some really nice Photoshop uh, kung fu here that they got. Like some, so each card has like different kind of fonts. It looks kind of like a collection of different like doodads, like a like a, a scrapbook kind of. A look and also you have like those those uh, this uh, seeds that Mulder is eating in the in the tv series so that's really nice <laughs> uh i mean the artwork is just screenshots from the series uh so it, i guess they had to like spend their artwork budget somewhere else and they certainly did a good job here i think except from this one aspect where sometimes it's difficult to read i also like new addition that we didn't have in netrunner where the cards are actually numbered yeah so you see like a little number here where is exactly, you know, you know exactly which card it is. So it's more collectible than, than Magic was or Netrunner was at the beginning. So that's really nice. Uh, there were ultra rare events. Uh, and this is another X-File you can pick. Warren, James Dupree, Lazarus Man. You killed me and let me die. Dupree is accusing Scully and another. So the idea is you pick one of those, you put it in the front here, and your opponent basically has to guess which one it is. And they ask a question about the qualities of this uh, X-File until they figure it out. Right. Do we have agents? Yes, we have agents. So these are the guys who you're basically you use to your figure planes. things out. Your, your pawns, basically. Your, Wait, let's see. Do you your, have any of the ultra rare? No, no, you don't. You never get ultra rare agents in the opening because you always get the the vital version of the agents. I was wishing for for Mulder and Scully, but I sadly, I just got Agent Jack Willis. What a you got? Uh, well, what's his face from Lost? Oh, it is. It is the guy from Lost. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Not in a wheelchair. Oh so my god. So Bill Tillman. Uh, we're not going to actually go through the rules because I'm not really familiar with the rules. But basically, the idea is that each of the agents um, has like different uh, properties. Again, with a tiny font, but this um, is a bit better readable. You can see it on the upper right. There is like different abilities they have, and those abilities make them uh, able to solve uh, certain cases. So you sometimes, you know, assigning a certain agent to a case uh, won't actually help you because they don't have the skills required to solve the case. And the weird thing is that there's so many skills and there's sometimes some of the skills like don't repeat. Like in this case, yeah, like for example, this one has behavioral at the top. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually sharp enough. Uh, so this one has behavioral on top and this one has bureaucracy on top. So these are actually super, a lot of difficult, difficult skills to keep track of. This is very complex, I would say. Uh, but then again, you don't get, get like a huge agent selection. You get you start the game with those three agents, and that's it. All right. So I, yeah. I have to admit something here because I've been looking up, looking it up. Matt Wilson designed the X Files board game. Ah. And so this one, the U.S. Playing Card Company, was designed by Ron Kent and Duncan McDonald, who have not designed anything else. So we uh, we were wrong. We apologize. Oh gosh, I got Dana Scully. <gasps> Oh my gosh, oh! Is it the rare version? No, her? obviously not. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess not. You have to look this up. I'm, uh, I'm looking at it. Up so, right this now. is number uh, 173. Um, is it 1224? Um, so, the idea is that uh, in the starter set, you in the vital cards, you always get like one version of the agent, but there is also another more rare version of the agent. Um, one important thing is like down here, these are basically the resources that are available. This is, this is credits. And at the beginning of each turn, you get that many credits uh, if you ha still have this agent on board. Uh, so, where is yeah, the card number at? Uh, w w it's XF96 minus uh, 0173V1. It's like a very complicated number. XF96. Yeah, that is the ultra rare Dana Scully. Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. You got. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of want to sleeve back. it immediately, uh, but I don't Here care too much about this game set. <laughs> you can buy the ultra rares online for ten dollars a piece. That's uh, that's a steal. Speaking of steal, so these are the sites. And you play or these sites. So in a in a simple game, you just play one of these sites and you can assign the agents to those sites. Uh, these are basic places where you investigate stuff. So you know you have Browning MT, which is I guess just some kind of forest. Um, Florida. Uh, what is MT? MT. It's Montana. Montana. Gip, uh, Gibson, Florida. Olympic National Forest in Washington, Mount, Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, Mount Avalon in Washington, Icy Cap, Cape, Icy Cape, AK, uh, Alaska, Alaska. So, oh yeah, this is the, where the where the worm episode uh, happens. Mm -hmm. Genetic Clinic, Martin County, California, Newark, New Jersey. I was there recently. Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Ma, yeah. All right, I'm not so not so good on my states, but the idea is that um, basically these are the servers that you run on if you want to use uh, Netrunner uh, Speak, and um, you need science four or more. So you have to uh, combine uh, co combine all your agents and see if they have a science skill. I would assume that Scully has a science skill. I cannot believe you pulled that card, by the way. Yeah, Scully has sciences three. I'm gonna come to Germany and steal it. I'm, I'm going to give it to you if you want to. <laughs> so she has Sciences 3, so, so she would need, uh, she alone, and she needs some, some sidekick uh, that also has some science skill, and they, then she would able to run this site. Uh, and then uh, if she succeeds, um, because there's of course some difficulties about this, uh, but if she succeeds, then she can ask a question about the affiliation of the X file of the opponent. So affiliation would be in this case, uh, the, the upper one. So the, they can, she can ask if this is no cult or, or if it's alien or if it's whatever. Wait a minute, I have to take this back. That is the fix to Dana Scully. I knew it, Nick, I <laughs> knew it. Of course it is a fix. It wasn't a fixed pack. Why should I get the, the <laughs> Ultra Rare? I'm still excited about, about having uh, somebody who I recognize from the show on here. Uh, ultra Rare Dana Scully, her abilities are different. Her game effect. Yeah, probably she had more science. 
So, um, so these are these are all simple sites because you know this one needs evidence collection, and you can add the method uh, ask a method question. This is a medical prerequisite, and you can ask an affiliation question again. This is an evidence collection, and you can ask a result question. This is a science uh, prerequisite, and you can ask a method question. All of these uh, just have one. Uh, allow one type of question, but there are some sites which have uh, which have multiple which allow multiple types of questions. You can uh, ask different different types of questions. So these are the sites, uh, and then of course the op your opponent can play uh, bluff or adversary cards on on these sites to make the things a bit more complicated. So this is Doctor Berubi, right? Mm -hmm. And Doctor Berubi. Uh, uh, apply a minus two modifier to any one skill check involving one of the following skills, alien investigation, medical and sciences. So this guy basically distracts your agents so they cannot do alien investigation so good anymore. Uh, this is also interesting because this has different rules depending on whether you're playing the basic game or the advanced game. So if you're playing the advanced game, Dr. Barubi is very complicated. You pay the listed uh credits cost where x is the number of credits paid to gain the desired modifier to the following skills so you can even control how much dr baruby distracts the agents and this is another bluff this is paul mossinger which i actually I watched this episode recently that's i think the second episode <laughs> um which is about aliens on a military base uh, ufos on a military base and this guy pretends to be a uh journalist but it turns out to be one of the uh, military guys from the base and he also uh, makes alien investigations observations and subterfuge more difficult so this is this is one of the ways in which your opponent tries to defend the sites from you being to able to ask the questions and you want another one is the adversary so uh, these are a bit rare i think and um, these are basic guys trying to kill their opponents uh, your agents and you can have to fight them and there's like long range and close range combat and health involved it's i per per perfectly honest i don't know exactly um how it's played maybe we're going to play a game and explain yeah, everything you should bring this to uh to america when you come we will play i'll try so yeah this is like a zombie and uh, slithers in the night. Mm. These are all uh, what happened in like different episodes. Yeah, uh, and these are the things that you can use as a as an agent to uh, boost your abilities to solve a case. You can bring in witnesses who Im improve some things. For example, this guy, U.S. Marshal Tapia, uh, adds one to team's evidence collection skill check. And this is Mage Maggie Holvey, and she adds one to Teams uh, Occult Investigation Skill Check. So these give you additional hints, so we can solve the phases uh, better. So it's basically like a back and forth. Your the one team is trying to boost their abilities to get uh, over a certain threshold, while the other team is trying to uh, add uh, uh, debuffs to make it uh, to make it more difficult to get over a certain threshold. All right. That, I, you know, I, I want to go back and play this game. I haven't played it in forever. So we're going to go through through those games uh, cards real quick uh, to show you. So this is an additional thing that you can throw in uh, during a combat. It has, it has this little, there's this little X in the corner. There's this little, little green X. And that X indicates that this is a card that should be only in the in the deck when you're playing the advanced type of game, which I really like. That there's the they acknowledge that the rules are difficult, and so they give you like yeah. a like a boiled down version, so you can start playing right away. And then later on, when you get bored with it, you can you can uh, expand the strategy options. So this is spin kick. Usually, the combat tricks are things that you could play during combat, and uh, comb combatants that can use martial arts may play this card to add three to their close range combat skills so you can spin somebody spin kick somebody in the face uh, this is mind control playing an occult or evolution evolutionary adversary to cause one agent to allocate all damage to a target of the adversary's choice this round oh so an agent attacks your own guys i guess yeah this are this arm advers adversaries that can use martial arts may play this card in close range combat round to cause one equipment card from the opponent side to be discarded. Yeah, so there's sometimes also equipment stuff going on. Uh, so this is a bluff again. 
uh, add oh so you you can use play this as an adversary to add uh, so the the red hands are the credits that you use when you are the bad guys when you're trying to defend against the questions and the blue shields are the credits that you can use when you are the agents and so this gives you just credits uh, radioactive area uh, increase a site prerequisite by one point in addition to the uh, two, in, the, in addition, if team fails the skill check, each agent on the team takes a point of damage. Mm -hmm. If one of the agents has a Geiger counter, then this card has no effect. So th that's something that's really funny. That you don't have too much in Magic and in other cards, but I think it's a bit of a cheap design uh, um, method, which is you you reference other cards on a card. Which is, I think, a bit weird because, you know, I don't have to, maybe I don't have the Ge Geiger counter card, so I don't know what Geiger counter is. And it's like, I don't know how, how often it comes up and how often it's indexed. It's kind of like weird. But I mean, at least it's the thing that you would want to have in a situation if you were actually near. A yeah, I mean, it's, thematically it's great, but it's yeah. just design wise. It's, I think it's a, bit, it's a bit of an issue. So another uh, combat trick, um, play this card to negate the effects of any combat card that ends combat. The cost of this card is equal to the cost of the opponent's card that ended. Gosh, this is very complicated. I'm not, go <laughs> I'm not going to go through the rules because I'm not going to pretend I know, understand what is going on here. So these are events. You can also play like individual events. Play on a team in a bureau. If the team makes a bureaucracy plus four skill check, then you may add, uh, may search through your bureau deck and draw one equipment card to add to your hand. Show the card to your opponents and shuffle it in your deck. So you could get your Geiger counter. Yeah, exactly. You can get your Geiger counter. counter. Force opponent team to make a criminal investigation plus five. Skill check uh, or they will uh, unable to add their skills to this skill site skill check next turn. All right, so you swap them in paperwork. Fascination. Mm. Play on an adversary to add one to its close range combat skill check. In addition, if the adversaries are cold, play on the chosen agent in combat to negate his combat skills. So, so yeah, so your com your agent gets fascinated by by something. Crew cut man again, another adversary. He can. There is like some re um, like um, restriction on which uh, adversaries you can use on which sites. Some sites are you know supernatural or something, and then you cannot use certain things. Uh, this is uh, good people. This is a weird eat, adversary. Eat good people, people, good food. Like what's going on? Like he, they're eating people. Yeah, I guess. Uh, this is a very horrible episode from the first uh, <laughs> season, where you basically play against Kit. Uh, the opponent is Kit from Knight Rider. Pheromone induced psychosis. I'm gonna just go through the adversary. Blur. So th that's weird. Like every now and then you have to turn the deck around. Like what's going on here? Doesn't so, it? Isn't it the different types of? Uh, maybe I don't know. It seems random because also yeah. the cards also seem random. Uh, so yeah, we can jump, uh, jam the the uh, the gun. We can hide. Hi. So this is yeah, yeah. These are the lonely gunmen, right? The lone gunmen, yeah. And they had their own little spinoff show for so very brief. I think later on you get the, the actual guys, but because this is just one event. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is another... The, the Lone Gunman is actually an ultra-rare uh, event. We also had uh, Mossinger and Dr. Monto. Uh, there's another site, another site, some more sites. Government car, Nick. Heck yeah, I want a government car. Yeah, it increases your in criminal investigation skill. If you have a car, you can drive around. Look at this, like, some really nice, like... Like each each card type has like different designs and different fonts to make it yeah. really seem like, like also the, the artwork. Work yeah, this, this this somebody put some really hardcore Photoshop effort into into making this. I really like this. This is really nice. And also like the card number is always hidden somewhere in a, in a, in a meaningful way. You can uh, have a knife, Nick. So you can your close range combat is uh, increased. Crop circles. Mm, classic. Play after one of your team's successfully investigated site with alien investigation skill as your prerequisite. Place this card in your bureau, discard this card to add one alien investigation skill check. Nice. Oh man, fingernail scrappings. Oof. Oof. Oh no. So, I noticed recently I was watching uh, Fire Walk with me. Uh, what? Why? I don't know. I, I had to because I finished the, the series. And man, 
finger is like if I can watch people getting like blasted apart in, into like little particles, that's no yeah. problem. But somebody like manipulating fingernails, ugh, or teeth, teeth is uh, same, same I think. Uh, expert briefing play on an agent in a bureau the agent is taken out of play for one full turn at the start of the briefing next uh, briefing phase of the next turn that agent may be deployed as normal in addition to it has plus one to one of the following skills so you can like boost your agents for if you if you uh, put them away uh some more sites uh (laughs) lake okabugi New York. Oh, another X File. Eve, man, that was one creepy episode. That was a creepy episode. Which with genetic modified twins. This is, I think, the first episode. I think so. Yeah, because yeah. that's Mulder and his sister, right? No, it's another guy, but it's kind of reminiscent of Mulder's. Yeah. Mulder's. Uh, that's the second episode where they are, Mulder is uh, goes to the, this military base and finds a UFO, obviously. Uh, hazardous sample. I think that's the episode with a worm. That's really great. That's one of the best episodes, I think. It's like basically like the thing. It's the classic episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really great. Um, place uh, and it's a, another bluff. Placed uh, play to force investigating player to discard all keyword evidence collection cards in his hand. Nice. Uh, another bluff. Place place play to change one keyword occult occult investigation behavioral or observation to a to a to card to a key key. The keyword method. So we can kind of switch around uh, what kind of questions you can ask. And the cigarette smoking. Ah, uh, the classic. But that's also an X-File, interestingly. So that's not a bluff or something. That's that's, an, that's something you have to investigate. So these are the cards. I'm not sure which is my rare. We're going to display it in the in the, uh, in the some kind of overlay kind of fashion. So, so yeah, Nick. I uh, like this game. I think that it would have been a lot better if they had not put Ultra Rares in there. Yeah. Um, it came out at a time when people were pretty sick of the whole idea of uh, collectible card games. Yeah. But I like it's like sort of asynchronous nature. And, yeah. Um, the way that you kind of piece together parts of a puzzle, but yeah. you can fight each other over each part of that puzzle. Yeah, that's something I really like. You really f- you are actually discovering a mystery. Like you are trying to discover hidden information. And that's something that's really evocative of what a series does. Like you are investigating something, you're asking questions. Yeah. Uh it would be really weird if you, you know, you, if you were agents and you fight against the cigarette smoking man and you have to shoot him or something. That wouldn't make sense, right? Yeah. I think that the, the, the hardest part about this game is that if somebody had one of the ultra rare agents, they will always win everything. Yeah, that's basically a general problem of, of trading card games. Maybe we can talk about this real quick because this is also weird. In Netrunner, for example, uh, these days in the LCG, you can put only three cards uh, of any given type in your deck. Yeah. But uh, back then, you could put as many cards as you have. So I don't. It was it was usually limited to four because that's what magic late, allowed. Later on, they brought in four, but I think even magic initially had had uh, not, not not don't quote you on this one. But Netrun- it was four except for plague rats. So so netrunner was not limited. You could put in as many cards as you wanted. Could you? You, you could yes. So you could have like a deck full of uh, of uh, sure gambles or something. Huh. And uh, so the idea was, of course, that they never expected again, like the entire, like they didn't really know how people would react to trading card games, I think. Uh, and so they expected that uh, rarity would be enough of a of a control mechanism to to balance the game, right? Like if uh, a, ca- a card is rare, then it would be very unlikely for somebody to get like four copies of this, you know? Yeah, well, but they, of course they un- underestimated players once more, and players actually bought like tons of those cards to get those broken cards to play them uh, over and over again, and to really destabilize the game. So that's why I had, uh, they had to like restrict certain cards and had to like introduce those rules on how deck building works. All right, so this is X Files, the card game. Uh, the trading card game. We're gonna see if we can actually um, do some games with this. This would be really interesting. Who are you gonna con? I mean, tempt into playing this game. Hmm. Let's see about that. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe it's gonna be Unique. Oh, I'll play this game. I yeah. yeah. It's been a long time since I played it. But. Let's see about that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we can also play it in Octagon. I don't 
think so. Maybe? Uh, anyways, uh, yes, so this is the X-Files. We're going to see if we can play this. Uh, and otherwise, there are some more expansions of this game. Uh, but I haven't got any expansion cards. There's one expansion that came out, I think, in... There was uh, one expansion that came out, and then there was another 97. expansion that was finished. They had demo decks at Gen Con, but then mm. the game was canceled. And so the only existing uh, versions of those cards are from the people who didn't destroy their demo decks. Yeah, and there's... Uh, so there's... 96 was the original game. 97 was the expansion, which is called 201361. This is the birth date of Fox Mulder. Yeah. And then there was... In the same year, there was an, another so-called expansion called The Truth uh, is out there. Uh, but that was basically like a re-release of the uh, original uh, card game with some little minor changes. So basically like a reprint version. All right, guys. So this is going to be it for today. Uh, next time we're going to look at some other trading card game. Right? I hope so. I hope so too. And see you next time. Uh, we have been, always have been, CCG Archaeology. It belongs in a museum.